Hey everybody, Mrs. Buttershawn here. Today we're talking percent composition and it is super simple. So what does a percent composition of the material tell you when you look at a tag, like say on your shirt? If you read it, it will actually tell you the percentage of each one of the fibers that are in your shirt. So this one says 85% acrylic, 10% nylon, and 5% polyester. Those all combine to give you 100% of the fibers that are in your shirt and then you know how much each one appears in your shirt uh, for the fabric. So this also happens for compounds. If you look at this example, we have potassium chromate, um, which is K2CrO4, and you can see this pie chart here all adds up to 100% for potassium chromate, and you can see the breakdown of each one of the elements. So we have the majority being potassium at 40.3%, and then oxygen at 32.9% and chromium over here at 26.8%. And again, they all add up to 100%, but now you know how much each one appears at inside the actual compound. So how do we calculate percent composition? Here's our formula that we're gonna be using. We're gonna take the total mass of the element and we're gonna divide that by the mass of the compound, or in other words, the molar mass. And then we're gonna multiply that by 100 in order to turn it into a percentage. So let's go ahead and look at this. Find the percent composition of each element in C4H6O4. The very first thing you need to do is go to the periodic table, look up each of your elements and get the mass of each one. So here we go, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen right here for you, but we have a different amount of each of these we have four carbon, six hydrogen, and four oxygen. So now we need to multiply how many we have by the mass on the periodic table. So you're gonna see that we multiplied four times 12 for carbon, and essentially we're getting the molar mass of the carbon for the C4, right? So 48 grams. We're gonna do the same thing with hydrogen. We're gonna do six times the one that we are seeing on the periodic table. It's okay to round, that's perfectly fine. Um, and you're gonna get six grams and then four times the 16 on the periodic table and you get 64 grams. In order to find the mass of the entire compound or the molar mass, you're now gonna add up these numbers and you end up getting 118 grams. So our next step is to use that equation for percent composition. We're gonna end up doing um, each one individually. So we just found that carbon was 48 grams and we're gonna divide that by the total that we got for the whole um, compound, which was 118 grams. If we divide that, multiply it by 100 and we can turn it into percentage, it ends up being 41% uh, for carbon in our compound. Then we're gonna do the same thing for hydrogen. Hydrogen, we ended up getting um, six grams but that was out of 118 grams total. Multiply it by 100 and you get 5%. So hydrogen's only 5% of this entire compound, even though it looks like there's a lot going on, it's a very small percentage of it, right? Um, oxygen, we ended up getting 64 grams and that was out of 118. Notice our bottom numbers are always the same because the compound has the molar mass of the total of all of them, right? So that's not gonna change. Multiply that by 100 and we get 54% um, for oxygen. If we add up all of these, we end up getting 100%, which is perfect, is what it should be. If you're not getting 100%, you did something wrong, go back and check your work, okay? And you can see here that oxygen is gonna be the one that appears the most in this compound. It makes up the most of this actual compound. Let's try another example. So propane, which is C3H8, the few commonly used in gas grills calculate the percent composition for each element. This is really asking us to do two questions because we have two elements. We have carbon and we have hydrogen and it's saying for each element, calculate the percent composition. So we're gonna kind of break this down into two different sections, right? We're first gonna find the mass. Go to the periodic table, go ahead and look up uh, carbon and hydrogen, and then you're gonna go ahead and take the mass. So here's carbon. We have um, in one mole of this, we're gonna times it by three because we have three carbon going on. And what are we timesing it by? Our um, mass off the periodic table, 12. Go ahead and round, that's perfectly fine. And you end up getting uh, 36 grams. Next one, we're gonna look at hydrogen. We have eight hydrogen, 
and we're gonna multiply that by the number off the periodic table, which is one, so we end up getting eight grams for hydrogen. Well, if we add those together, we end up getting our molar mass of our compound, so we're gonna do 36 grams plus eight grams, and that gives us 44 grams. Now we can go on to our percent composition formula, and we're gonna do our total mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound, in other words, the molar mass, right? And then multiply it by 100 when we're finished. So here I broke them down. Here's the mass um, percent for carbon, and we are going to do um, 36 grams divided by what was our total, and our total was 44. Um, if we go ahead and get that, it is 0.82. Multiply it by 100, and it is 82%. So the majority of propane is carbon. And then if we look at hydrogen, hydrogen was eight grams, still out of 44, our bottoms number should match because that's how much it's out of total, right? Uh, we end up getting 0.18, multiply it by 100 to turn it into percent and it's 18%. So hydrogen makes up hardly any um, of the propane, but however, it's very important. Does this all equal 100? Yes, if I do 82 plus 18, it does give me 100%. Let's try another one. Calculate the mass of carbon and 93 grams of propane, and our formula is still the same, the C3H8. Okay, the very first thing we need to look at is kind of what our roadmap is to do. So we're gonna take our given mass, which is this 93 grams, and we're gonna multiply that by the percent composition of carbon, because it's asking for carbon, right? Um, but we need to change it in decimal. We can't do this with a percent, so we're just gonna kind of backtrack and we're gonna turn it into a decimal. So we did already calculate um, the percent composition for carbon and it was 82%. If we go ahead and divide that by 100, that puts it back into a uh, decimal for us, which is just 0.82. So this is the number we're gonna be using for our math, okay? So we're doing the 93 from um, our word problem right here that's already given. And then we are gonna multiply that by uh, 0.82, which has been changed from the percent to the decimal. And we end up getting 76.26 grams of carbon. Okay, now let's go ahead and try this one. Calculate the mass of hydrogen and 93 grams of propane. So we're doing the exact same thing, but now with hydrogen instead of carbon, right? So we're following the same formula, same method, so let's go ahead and look. We calculated already that hydrogen was 18% uh, composition. So we're gonna change it back into a decimal. So 0.18, okay? We're just dividing by 100 here in order to turn it back into a decimal. We're using the number we were given in our word problem, which is our 93 grams again, um, and we're gonna multiply that by our decimal, right? So that is 0.18. And we end up getting 16.74 grams of hydrogen. Okay, now you check your work. Make sure you're doing this right. So take your two answers. We had one answer for hydrogen, one answer for carbon. Put them together, add them up. Do they equal 93 grams? We're not, we're not looking for 100 this time, right? Because this isn't out of our percentage anymore. This is out of um, the mass of the propane that was given to us in our word problem and it said we had 93 grams, which means that when we add up our grams, it needs to say what it, what it was. It was 93, and it does equal 93. So therefore, we did a good job, and our work is correct. You guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.